Hi, I'm Marilyn. Welcome back. I have a passion for making art and teaching art, and hopefully teaching art in a way that makes it easy, fun, and convenient. Do you have a stack of less than perfect paintings? Maybe they hide under your bed or in the back of a closet. I, I call this my oops file. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a less than perfect painting and find the good parts. Then we're going to mount it to a wood panel, trim it edge to edge for a really neat, clean look. And maybe we'll be able to give one of these less than perfect paintings new life. In a previous video, I showed you how to mount a five and a half inch square watercolor to a six inch square cradled wood panel, leaving just a little bit of wood showing as a frame. Well, in this video, I'd like to show you how to find the good parts of a less than perfect painting and then mount and trim edge to edge to a cradled wood panel for a nice, neat, clean look. And it's a way to give a less than perfect painting a new life. Come on, I'll show you how this works. The first thing I do is use tracing paper to create templates for the wood panels that I have on hand. I basically just lay the panel on the tracing paper, use a black marker to trace around the outside, and that way I can lay this over my painting uh, like a window, and I can see which part of the painting it is that I think I want to keep. Now, I've learned the hard way that I want to make sure I indicate a margin. The last thing you want to do is cut off too much. Um, I think the old adage is measure twice, cut once, and um, so just adding that helps a little bit. I label each template. I can save these, and I'll have them for a future project. So I have an 8x8 an 8 by 10 and a 9 by 12. The next step involves using these templates that I've created on tracing paper to decide which part of the painting I want to keep and which part I want to get rid of. I like using the tracing paper because I can see through the window basically uh, to determine what might work best. And by having one for each of the different sizes, I can experiment a little bit before I make a final decision. I think with the picture of the bathhouse from Honeyman Island State Park that I'm going to uh, make that an 8x8, so I put a post-it note on it to remind myself. Now let's work with the water lilies. 8x8, mm, doesn't seem to work for me. 8x10, no, again, I can't quite capture the parts that I like best. So let's see what happens when we use the 9x12 template. Ah, bingo, I think we've got a winner. So again, I'll put a post-it note on it, put it to the side. The ladies on the bench, I really like the shadow colors of the bench and um, the sharp outlines, so I want to capture the left-hand side of the, this painting. And it looks like any of the three templates would work. I think I'm going to go with 8 by 10 and I think we'll do it portrait. In step three, I'm going to use the template to make some marks on the painting just to indicate where the crop line will be. I have found it's easier for me if I have an alignment guide by either marking the top uh, two corners or the bottom corners. And I also like to add that line that indicates a margin. The last thing I want to do is cut off too much. And now it's time to get the scissors. So we're going to trim off the excess, and then we'll be all set to mount this on a wood panel. Now I'm going to use those pencil marks that I made at the top corner to center my uh, painting on the panel. And I like to fold the edges down, give it just a little bit of a crease. I find that's really helpful when I turn it over and go to add the, uh, the glue to the back side of the painting. Now we're going to use inexpensive acrylic craft paint 
to stain the edge of the panel. You can use any color that you feel is complementary to your painting. I happen to have some dark umber on hand. I've watered it down. I basically wipe it on and then take a paper towel and wipe it off. After we've done all four sides and give them a, a real good rub with a paper towel, we're going to set it aside and let this dry overnight so that we'll be ready for the next step. Now it's time to get out the glue. I'm going to use acrylic medium as the adhesive and I want to be very generous in um, applying this to the back of the painting. I'm using those fold lines as, an, uh, as a guide for um, which part of the paper will actually be adhering to the wood panel. Um, one thing I found is using a brush helps to spread it and I also like to pay special attention to the corners. Make sure we have plenty, plenty of medium on those critical spots. Once that's covered, I'm going to turn it over and using my pencil marks and those crease lines, those fold lines, I'll place it on the panel. I only have a couple of seconds to make adjustments, so I, I try to get it right the first time. Using parchment paper or wax paper helps to protect the painting because now I'm going to use a brayer and make sure that the painting is in full contact with the panel. You can use your hands and um, you know rub firmly to make sure that it is adhered across the panel. Now we'll turn it over, make sure that if any of that acrylic medium uh, oozed out, we want to make sure that we wipe it off the wood panel. And we'll turn it over, add some weight, and leave it overnight. Now that the acrylic medium is dry, we're going to trim the excess off the painting. And I'm using a mat knife with a new blade. You can use an X-Acto knife or a stencil knife. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're using a new blade and that you work slowly on the corner so that you don't accidentally tear off uh, part of your painting. Now, I, uh, I'm also working on a mat that quilters use when they use a rotary cutter for cutting multiple layers of fabric. Now that we've got it all trimmed, we're ready for the next step. We're going to use some Dorland wax medium and working in a circular fashion, I'm just using my fingers to apply this across the whole surface of the painting. I really love this stuff. It, is, it has no odor, it is easy to work with, and the results I think are really nice. You want to make sure that you pay attention to the sides of the panel as well and give them a good coating of wax. We're going to leave that overnight to dry, and now it's time to take a soft cloth and buff. Again, I'm just working in a circular fashion across the surface of the painting, and you'll be able to feel the drag uh, when there's too much wax on there. Make sure you pay attention to the sides as well. And there you go. You have a painting that is now protected from dust and moisture and all ready for display. I like the soft sheen that it gives. One of the things that I just love about cradled wood panels is that they'll stand up by themselves on a shelf, no hanging hardware needed. Or, if you choose, you can drop it into an open back frame for a really classy display. That's it for this lesson. Now go check your stack of less than perfect paintings and see if you have something that would benefit from a little cropping and trimming. Stay tuned to this channel for more tips and tutorials and demonstrations. And thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon.